What up? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And look at you. You done stumbled upon little OTB Saints, where we bring you all the latest black and gold coverage. Who are the Saints going to draft? Who's going to be their quarterback? What does the salary cap look like? All that information and more. Hope you enjoy it. Like, subscribe. All right, so the New Orleans Saints, we know what they did in the first round. Obviously, that was on Thursday night. They go Brian Brzee from Clemson. Love the pick. He is somebody that was ranked about where he got selected, and it was a position of need for you. So you go, you get a player who I think can be even more dominant. This is somebody that last year, when you look at the year he had, he had injuries. Obviously, he went through a lot of personal stuff. He had his sister pass away. It's a tragic deal if you remember watching during college football season, but that is somebody that I think is going to be a really good player for the New Orleans Saints, and we've broke that pick down on Friday. Let's go through the rest of the picks. And this might be the one pick that I just don't understand to this point, and someone's going to have to explain to me. That is Isaiah Foskey from Notre Dame going that early in the second round. When you look at where he was on a lot of big boards, position rank, he was anywhere from 9, 10, 11. ESPN.com had him at 9. I actually had him at 11th in my rankings. Overall rank, ESPN.com had him 77th. He goes in the 40s, early 40s, right? I had him at 90th on my uh, draft board. He got a grade of 75. So this is a player in a position that was somewhat a need. I don't think it was the most pressing need. When I go back to the needs chart for the New Orleans Saints, right? You've got defensive tackle. You had tight end. You have receiver. And then you probably had edge rusher and offensive guard. Now you hit all of those but one and tight end. And we'll certainly get to that with the Adam Troutman trade. But Foskey's somebody that graded out last year in run defense at 67%. When you look at what he did as far as rushing the passer, 73%. And that's pro football focus grades. So didn't grade out great last year. The Saints at that position have had some misses. We were talking before the show. That is a position that sometimes, and more times than not, it feels like the Saints are trying to be the smartest guy in the room and try to pick the guy that nobody else was going to select at that position. Now, you know, a guy like B.J. Ojolari actually went the next pick, and he was ranked about where he got picked, somewhere there in the 40s. Now, it's a different player because a lot of people ask me that same question. B.J. is 235 pounds. When you look at Foskey, he is 264 pounds. Different players. The Saints run a different defense. That's why they go there and not B.J. Ojolari. Now, Mario, you did make a good point. I mean, the stats are there. Now, the film, we can get into that. There is a little stiffness there. But you talked about the double-digit sack seasons that he's had there for Notre Dame. Yeah, the production is at least there for him, which is encouraging if you're a Saints fan. This is a school you've heard of, decent program in Notre Dame. And I didn't see as much of the Fighting Irish as you guys did, I guess, but the accolades are there. I mean, second-team All-American last season, finalist for the Ted Hendricks Award, which is the award for the nation's top defensive end. Like, this is a guy that has the measurables. You just yeah. said 6'5", 260, but he had the production at Notre Dame as well. So it looks on the surface like a good pick. It's not even necessarily the pick. I think for me, it's where he got selected. You had some tight ends that were still on the board, so my mind was going to tight end for the Saints. But look, again, they didn't select a tight end, and they traded one. They traded Adam Troutman for a late-round pick. So in their mind, the way they are viewing this, tight end is not as big of a need as maybe we think it is. I still think it is, but in their mind, off of their actions, that is not something that they're worried about because I thought they'd go tight end there at 40. Actually, I thought at the beginning of the day because as we looked, I mean, you still had Michael Mayer from Notre Dame. You had Luke Musgrave from Oregon State. You had Sam Laporta from Iowa. You had all these players in the second round. And I thought, would they move up for one of those players? Because Laporta goes before that pick. Michael Mayer goes before that pick. But with the Saints and how aggressive they are, I was wondering, would they move up? They do not move up, and they take Isaiah Foskey from Notre Dame, and we'll certainly get more in to that pick. All right, they go in the third round. They go Kendra Miller from TCU. This is somebody that was ranked as the fourth best running back in the draft. When you look at the overall rank, 73rd, graded out at 77%. All right, I told you boys to get y'all's favorite New Orleans Saints draft choice ready. I'm going to go ahead and steal this one before y'all do. Because Kendra Miller, I think, is my favorite Saints draft choice. Now, when you look at the first round, 
For Z is a very solid choice. And I like that one. That would have been chalk. And y'all can. Y'all can go chalk if you want to with that pick because it was your biggest need. But you needed a running back. And I know I'm probably biased here. And I know that people like to devalue the position. But I think this is a good, solid pick in the third round. 5'11", 216 pounds. Last year at TCU, ran for 1,400 yards. 6.2 yards per carry. 17 touchdowns graded out at 88.5 percent in the run game to kind of give you a comp Jameer Gibbs who went 12 overall graded out in the low 80s as far as a rusher okay now Gibbs is going to rate higher as a receiver but that's not why you're bringing in Kendra Miller he grades out at 61.3 percent as a receiver it's not what he does well he only had 16 catches last year for 116 yards okay but he is Really good for what you do. The Saints were top three in the NFL running between the tackles last year with Alvin Kamara as their lead back. That does not meet what Alvin Kamara is really good at. Alvin Kamara can do a lot of different things, but you don't want to be running him in between the tackles, but that was your philosophy. So what do you do? Well, you go get a Jamal Williams, who's really good at that, and you draft Kendra Miller, who's also really good at that. When you look at where a bulk of his yards came from, they came on zone runs between the tackles. This is somebody that did not participate at the combine. Remember, he got hurt against Michigan, doesn't play in the national championship game against UGA. So he did not compete at the combine. Doak Walker Award semifinalist his last year at TCU. And remember, they had Zach Evans at TCU before he goes to Ole Miss. Kendra Miller comes in as a three-star player, and they he forced them to play him with Zach Evans. Zach Evans was as five-star as five-star gets, but Kendra Miller played himself into that rotation. Zach Evans leaves, and Kendra Miller becomes the guy. So on my chart, I have his strengths. You know, Miller has good vision and a great feel of zone run concepts. He has a good blend of size and speed and is a determined runner. He was used often to pick up blitzes at TCU and has the strength to anchor and stand blitzers up. Those are all great things. So it's kind of weird when you break down Miller's film He's really good and holds up in pass protection. But his weakness is probably catching the football and run after catch. He just did not do it a lot at TCU. Another one, he kind of stands up when he gets in the second level and tries to look for the next cut. 216 pounds, run behind your pads, and I think he will learn that. That is a change you have to make once you go to the next level. So I love this pick for the Saints there in the third round. Certainly with the scheme that you're running, now, and you are a team that wants to run between the tackles, you go get someone who had, again, 1,400 yards in the Big 12, did a really nice job of pass protection, and you're going to need that because when you look at the backs you have, who now is going to be that third down back? You're going to have to have somebody step up and be that third down back if AK does miss time like we indeed think he is going to. So that's the third round pick. Have I taken any of the favorites there so far, Mario, for you? Uh, not yet, although okay. I, I agree with you. Building depth in the backfield is huge. Saints running game needs to be way more effective this season for uh, for Derek Carr to be good. But uh, for my favorite pick, I'm going to try to go good value here. I like A.T. Perry in the sixth round at number yeah. 195. I saw a decent amount of Wake, Wake Forest over the last few years. Yes, we and, have. And this is somebody, <laughs> yes, we have. Not always happy result, but this, yeah. is, this is somebody who has always stood out for the Demon Deacons. Uh, 15 touchdown receptions a couple years ago, which was the program record. Overall touchdown record of 28 touchdowns. Big body, catches a lot of passes, scores a lot of touchdowns, which made me think, why would, we, why would he drop all the way to the sixth round with those kind of numbers? Well, he's a little older for a prospect, 24 years old, and apparently he doesn't have really good breakaway speed. But those yeah. are really good numbers. Anytime you see somebody draft that late with those measurables, I think Marcus Colston. So in a perfect world, maybe he's the next Marcus Colston. I think A.T. Perry is an interesting pick. Yeah, I absolutely love the pick. Actually, so when we finished our show on Friday night, so we did the first three rounds for Sirius XM. By the way, Kansas City was fantastic. Kansas City did everything that they needed to do and more to host that event. And cities like that, I just love it. I love, like, New Orleans knows how to host a party. Kansas City knows how to host. You don't have to go to the biggest towns. It's about who does it right, and Kansas City certainly did it right. But when we finished up and we were talking about, okay, who are you surprised it's still left and you think is going to go early in the fourth round? Of all the players left in the draft, I went A.T. Perry. He was the guy that I circled said, I'm surprised. Look, he's 6'4", 200 pounds, and look at his stats. And then you get into, well, it's a system, system, system. Okay, well, you still had to go out there and do what he did, okay? And the body, like you're talking about, Mario, at that size, I will take that every single day. I actually had him as my 11th best receiver 
I had him 93rd overall in this draft, so I think there's some real value there. In the fourth round, you go to Old Dominion, Nick Saldaveri from Old Dominion. Guard, tackle kind of combination, guys. Saldaveri is somebody that played in the Senior Bowl. Jim Nagy is going to join us in about 15 minutes to break down that pick. That's kind of why we're saving those. Jake Hayner, somebody we caught up with at the Senior Bowl. Uh, we're going to break that one down as well. He was the sixth-ranked quarterback in this draft. You get him in the fourth round, so I actually love that pick, and Jim's going to break that one down as well. Now, the fifth-round pick's the, really the only one I didn't have a scouting report on. Jordan Howden from Minnesota, a safety. That's why Bobby Carpenter is coming on. Bobby Carpenter breaks down the Big Ten with me on Sirius XM on the daily, so he's going to break down that pick for us. We talked about A.T. Perry there in the sixth round out of Wake Forest. Taylor, your favorite Saints draft choice. Well, Jacob Hester took my pick. That's okay. Go ahead. We, uh, Mario can attest to this. I texted Mario as soon as it happened. I was yeah, like, that is an outstanding pick. Uh, in my opinion, he was the third best running back in this draft behind B. John Robinson and Jameer Gibbs. I liked him over Ty mm -hmm. J. Spears. And not only did they get a running back, they got the most violent physical runner probably in yeah. this draft. I mean, that dude, he might be 216. He might as well be 230. He runs behind his pads and... Like you mentioned, I mean, you know, Kamara and Williams, they're both getting older. Kamara's not a between-the-tackles runner. No. Williams is, but they're going to use Williams a lot in the passing game. If you need that short yardage back right there, I think they got him in Kendra Miller. I think it was an outstanding pick. Yeah, I love it, and I love the fit, too. Like, when you start ranking running backs, and y'all know me. I've talked about Tajay Spears all season long, and certainly after the Senior Bowl, and he goes after this pick, and a lot of people are angry by that. Look, I, I'm, the again, biggest Tajay Spears fan that you're going to find. But when you look at what the Saints did last year offensively as far as the schematics of their run game, this might be the better pick. And, I, and look, I, we're going to go like favorite picks by round. Maybe a little bit later on in the show, Tajay Spears is my favorite third-round pick. They both went in the third round. Well, make that make sense. Well, because I think both go to a better fit. Because Tennessee actually loves to run stretch with Derrick Henry. I know you see the size, and you're probably thinking, oh, they're a team that likes to run in between tackles. Now they will, but they like to get him on the edge as well. He puts his foot in the ground on that stretch lead and goes north-south, and nobody can tackle him. Well, Tajay Spears runs that play really, really well. So just because you have a back somewhere higher on your chart, it's all about fit in the NFL, and I think both players go to the better fit. So I do like that pick. Miller's um, you know, somebody I had circled as well, Taylor, so I like that one. Wow, just amazing black and gold takes right there, Jake. I don't think I've ever heard any takes that are better than the two guys that just gave you that take. And you can keep getting them by going ahead and liking, subscribing, ringing the bell to get notifications when we post. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next OTB Saints.